Hello again. I spoke yesterday of the way in which historical dramas on television and in films are now showing black people as having been present in large numbers at all stages of British history. This is irritating, but a more serious problem is the way in which British history is now being taught in this country's schools. The aim is to create the illusion that many of Britain's great achievements were really the work of black people who have been cheated of their rightful recognition. Of course, we've seen this trend with Mary Seacole, but it's now accelerating so that even the work of people like Charles Darwin and the exploration of Francis Drake are shown to have depended upon black men who have been airbrushed from history. This is annoying for white people, but very damaging for those of African or Caribbean heritage. Let's see how this fake history is propagated and what the results are. In the description to this video, I give a link to a completely mad website of the kind which most of us ignore. It is called africaresource.com and if you click on the link I give, you will see a piece headed John Edmonston the black genius who schooled Charles Darwin. This is about a black man who worked in Edinburgh in the early 19th century stuffing birds for a living and selling them to people who wanted them as either scientific specimens or ornaments for their living room. When Charles Darwin was at university in Edinburgh, he paid this man to teach him taxidermy. Darwin later wrote, a Negro lived in Edinburgh who had travelled with Walton and gained his livelihood by stuffing birds, which he did excellently. He gave me lessons for payment and I often used to sit with him for he was a pleasant and intelligent man. That is literally all we know about this. Just those few lines that Darwin wrote. We know nothing else at all about the matter. Darwin was learning about butterflies, birds and all kinds of things at that time and there's no reason to think that his lessons in taxidermy had any particular influence on him. However, the story of John Edmonston being somehow a genius who inspired Darwin has moved to the mainstream. The second li link I give is to a piece from the Sky History Channel. Listen to this nonsense. During those sessions, John filled Darwin's head with stories from his homeland about lush tropical rainforests and exotic flora and fauna. It could well be argued that John sparked Darwin's interest in naturalism and inspired him to explore the tropics. Within five years, medicine was a thing of the past and Darwin had secured a place aboard the HMS Beagle as a ship's naturalist during its famed voyage in 1831. Certainly Darwin would not have been aboard that ship had he not been equipped with the skills that John had taught him. Well, of course, we have no idea at all what John Edmonston talked about. He certainly didn't spark Darwin's interest in naturalism. It was his interest in that subject which had caused him to pay to learn about how to stuff birds in the first place. Darwin paid to travel on the Beagle. The fact that he knew something about taxidermy did not secure him a passage on the boat. John Edmonston may be found in the book A Hundred Great Black Britons and his story is now taught to primary school children alongside that of Charles Darwin as though the two had been jointly responsible for the theory of evolution. It's a bit like Mary Seacole and Florence Nightingale really. What about Francis Drake and his circumnavigation of the world? Where does a black man fit into that? The third link I give is to a piece by Miranda Black Tudor's Kaufman and it is headed The Untold Story of How an Escaped Slave Helped Sir Francis Drake Circumnavigate the Globe. Gosh, a black man helped Drake circumnavigate the globe. How did he do that? Was he perhaps a skilled navigator? A sailor even? Why, no. 
The man in question was called Diego, and he was Drake's personal manservant. That is to say, he polished Drake's boots, cooked his dinner, and ran errands for him. That's it. To say that he helped Drake to circumnavigate the globe is really pushing it a bit. But this too is now taught in primary schools. That Francis Drake could not have travelled on this famous voyage without the help of the black guy. This is the same gag as the one I mentioned the other day when a picture of Solomon Northup, uh, the man whose reminiscences were written down by a white guy as the book Twelve Years a Slave, uh, a black man who never wrote a book in his life, was placed up on the wall of an English department in a further education college alongside pictures of Mark Twain and Flaubert, 19th century authors who did write good books. The message is the same. Here is a black man who has been hidden from history and his achievements overlooked in favour of white people. I've seen this becoming a positive mania in schools and colleges in the last few years and the harm it does to black students is enormous. They are taught that their ancestors played a pivotal role in British history and that a black man in Edinburgh was just as significant in developing the theory of evolution as Darwin, but that his contribution has been ignored due to racism. This has the effect of making them feel hard done by and somehow cheated. They lose interest in history about white people and things which white people have invented or developed and only want to hear how they have been defrauded of the recognition rightfully due to Africans and Caribbeans over the centuries. This chip-on-the-shoulder mentality causes all kinds of trouble, chiefly to the kids and young people themselves. They too feel that their failure to get on is due to racism, rather than a lack of effort, and they believe that they are also being held back by white people. So whereas Indians and Chinese students and young people decide that if they're not getting on, they must work harder and their parents encourage them to do so, a lot of young black people simply give up on the struggle because they feel that racism is preventing them, that it's nothing to do with their own abilities or energy or efforts at all. After all, if the contributions to a black man of a black man to the theory of evolution could be hidden for those hundreds of years, what else have black people done that which they haven't been told about? What's the point of competing in white society when whatever they do, racism will deprive them of the fruits of their efforts? This is a really, really bad attitude for people to have in society.